Maybe you're a software developer looking for some projects to develop your skills, or maybe you've never done any programming at all and just know of some tasks in your life you could automate. Either is okay because today I'm gonna to be talking about why Python is a great language to automate different things in our life. And I'm gonna show you some Python scripts I wrote to help improve my video making workflow. Let's get started. Before I get into automation programs I made, let's talk about why I chose Python over other programming languages. Python is a fully interpreted language, and what that means is Python code can be run on any computer that has a Python interpreter installed. So I can take the same .py file and run it on a Windows machine, a Mac machine, a Linux machine, and they should all run about the same. The interpreter coded for each operating system basically knows how to take this high-level Python code, which means code that is easy for humans to understand and can translate it into instructions for that operating system to follow. This is in contrast to a language like C++, which is a compiled language. C++ programs have a compiler that turns that higher level code into machine code that the computer can actually execute upon. And while this improves performance, machine code is usually only written for Windows or Linux or certain architectures. The benefit to the cross-platform nature of Python is there are tons of free libraries you can use to help you achieve almost anything on any software platform. Plus, compared to other programming languages, Python has an easy to learn syntax, and there are plenty of resources out there for learning everything there is to know about Python. I'm not gonna show you how to install Python today, but I'm gonna link some references in the description down below if you are totally new to the world of Python. Before we get into the programs, the code editor that I'm using is a free program called VS Code. And basically it's like a notepad, but more specialized for writing code. You can use other programs such as PyCharm, Sublime Text, and Atom. It's basically just personal preference. I want to mention that if you have no prior programming knowledge, don't be scared of Python. I actually believe that the best way to learn to program that at least works for me is to first understand some basics and then create small little programs that increase in complexity over time as you learn more and more. So to start off, try to think of simple tasks in your life that you can easily automate with Python. Then slowly progress into the tasks that maybe you think are a bit more complex, maybe things that include a web server or IoT devices. This way you gain more confidence in building those smaller programs than you would trying to struggle by programming a really complicated one that you don't know how to do. All right, so this is an example of a very easy Python script that I use to save time while making videos. I have this particular folder structure I use to organize all the footage and audio so it's easy to find later. So I'll show you that now. Typically we have the name of the video, so I can name this Python video. And then inside that, a video folder. Inside the video folder, a 6300 folder, maybe an OBS folder. Um, basically a folder for each camera that we shoot video on. So iPhone 12 uh, folder, Sony 6300 folder, OBS folder. And then inside the A6300 folder, we have A-roll and B-roll. And then I also like to make an audio folder. Now that's not particularly hard to do, but from video to video, that process really doesn't change a whole lot and it's pretty repetitive. So I made this little program that basically just does it for me. Let me show you it in action. So enter a video name, we can call it Python test two. And it's gonna tell me that it created that folder structure for us. And if I go and check, sure enough, there's Python test two. I got my audio folder. I got my video folder, A6300. A roll, B roll, all good. So taking a look at the actual script, it's not a whole lot of code at all. We import a module that we need, which is basically just some code we need to use. We make a variable of where we should actually store these directories, store the video name in another variable. And then basically all this code just creates all those new folders that I was talking about. This is an example of a really easy Python script that I would say even someone with no Python knowledge could get into Google search. The first one would be how to take user input and store it into a variable. And the second one would be how to make directories with Python. If you've never programmed before, this probably makes sense to you because it's not as cryptic as some other programming languages. And this is just a good example of a script that is very easy and simple. And while it may only save me 10 seconds today, 
when I do that over and over and over again, over weeks, months, years, that time is gonna add up. And even if it's only 30 minutes or an hour over a couple months, that's 30 minutes to an hour, I don't have to spend doing this tedious folder thing. So simple, but awesome. This next example is a bit more complex, but it shows how there's a lot of room to make easy or more complex programs with Python. This program utilizes Google's Sheets API to automatically update our top spec schedule spreadsheet if we have backed up a certain video to our archives. If you don't know what an API is, it basically allows applications to request information and push information to or from a different application. And in this case, we are requesting the text in certain cells of a spreadsheet and then changing the text in other cells. Funny thing that happened while developing this program, I actually hit Google's API quota very quick because I was requesting and pushing data four to five cells a second. So if you're programming this and you're getting some sort of quota error, make sure you understand that as a free user, you understand your limits of how many times you can request information or push information to whoever's server in a day or a minute or whatever time allotted. They will usually tell you, and Google tells us that you can only make so many requests in a minute. You usually can't exceed that unless you wanna pay. So let me plug in the top spec archive drive here. And in our top spec schedule, you can see that there's a column called ARC, which stands for archive. And there's a check mark if we have that video on this hard drive backed up all the footage we shot, maybe a final export, the music, the graphics, all that kind of stuff. And then there's gonna be red X if we don't have that on the hard drive. So let me delete this column and I can actually show you it in action. So once we start the script and it starts running, if we take a look at the schedule, we can see that slowly, video by video, it's gonna say a check mark if we have that video in the archive, a dash if that's a row that has a video that we skipped for that week, and then it's gonna have a red X if we don't have it. And it goes a little slow, but that's because I had to purposely slow it down so I wouldn't exceed that quota that Google set for free users. Basically what the script is doing is in the spreadsheet, there is a video number column, which is a different script, but it's a Google Apps script, so not a Python script. But it basically says, this video was video number 12 that we've produced. This video is video number 34 that we've produced. And on the hard drive, when I back up all the footage, I will start the folder name with the video number. So, you know, video number 92, Max Keyboard Nighthawk Z Review video number 90, Dell XPS 15 9500 unboxing and first impressions. So basically what the script will do is it will look at a rose video number and then it will look at each folder in the archive folder. So each subdirectory in this archive directory. And then it will just take a substring, which basically means we have a string of characters. The substring is a smaller set of characters within that bigger set of characters. And it will take the first two characters, so it's gonna be the video number, so, you know, 81, 80, 79. And if they match, then we have that archive in the directory. It works, but it's not that efficient. If you look at the terminal output, we're on video numbers, you can see, damn, I missed it. You can see we're on video number 74, it's probably gonna be 75 soon. And you can see that it's checking folders that we already know we have the archive for. So this can be improved to make it a speedier process. Not like we're losing lots of time searching all those directories, because as you can see, it's doing it in less than a second, less than half a second, probably a couple milliseconds. But it's just the fact of knowing that it's not as efficient as it could be. It's probably not as efficient on memory or CPU power as it could be. So you wanna make code that works nice too. But I didn't have time for that, so this is what we get. Unlike the last program, we're actually making use of some modules and libraries that are not built into Python. So you can install additional libraries, which is code other people have written to help you do whatever you wanna do. And you can install those with what is called a package manager. So pip is a really popular one that I use. So we're importing some code that Google provides you to aid and actually connecting with their API. Making sure that with authentication, you actually are who you say you are and you can't just go into someone's random Google Doc 
or Google Sheet and ruin all their stuff, basically. And you can look at the code and it looks quite complex, but I just described to you what it does. I didn't just write this code without thinking about how I wanted to actually solve this problem first. So this code really doesn't matter. This is not the only way to solve the problem, as I told you. So I think it's important to sit down and actually think about what problems you want to solve, and then you can go about seeing how you can solve those problems. As for the API part of this code, you can see I'm making get requests and where is it? Where is it? And set requests, otherwise known as update cell uh, requests, which is basically get the text in this cell and then set the text in this other cell. This is actually really cool since lots of people use Google Sheets. Maybe you can find something that you want to do in your own Google Sheet that is a manual process and you could probably solve it with a Python script. We can improve this code by making it a little more user-friendly to use with maybe a GUI, but I hope that these programs have given you some sort of inspiration of some things that you can solve in your life with Python scripts. A lot of the work just comes down to research and a lot of Googling, but don't worry about it. Every programmer does it. There's just too much stuff to fit in your brain. So just Google what you don't know and hopefully you'll learn along the way. That's the most important part. Well, thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to give it a like and check out the channel for other tech content. Make sure to leave a comment down below if you like this video, which involved more programming than usual. And I'll be sure to try to make some more in the future. Thank you guys for watching and we will see you guys next Monday.